All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. Uh, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, so just leave it open. Any one of us can start with a word of prayer, please. Divya, would you like to pray? Sure, sure, Pastor. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, wonderful time that you've given us. Uh, Father, Lord, I uh, pray that you open our hearts, Lord, make our spirits receptive uh, to your word, to your principles. Uh, Father, that we may be able to understand, we may be able to perceive them, uh, that we may be able to apply them in our lives. Sapa. We pray, Father, that you give us a humble and a willing spirit, uh, a teachable spirit, Lord. Uh, we pray your blessing, your anointing and empowering over Pastor Paul. Uh, Father, we pray, Father, for strengthening him and uh, blessing his family. Father, we pray, Lord, for each and every student gathered here lord uh, it is not by uh, a coincidence or an accident that we are here father you have uniquely uh, father designed and purpose for us to be here lord all that we are hearing and learning uh, may we um, lord apply in our lives father and bear um, for uh, fruit father multifold uh, in our lives and in the lives of others we thank you we praise you in jesus precious name we pray amen Amen, amen. Thank you, Divya. Uh, all right. So we've been talking about uh, last class. We uh, we did chapter fourteen. Uh, we looked at uh, marketing, brand building, and selling. Uh, today we'll we'll move into chapter sixteen. So we'll just uh, come back to customer relations uh, if we have time towards the end of the semester. But uh, I just thought we'll get into chapter sixteen very important topic a topic which we all uh, uh, whether in ministry whether in the workplace we will uh, go through these challenges and tough times right so uh, so we'll begin with chapter 16 today uh, now we don't i don't have to explain about challenges and tough times right uh, each one of us have different kinds of challenges we've had challenges in the past we're going through a challenge right now we're going through a tough time so all of us have had our share of challenges and tough times, right? Uh, now, when when these challenges and tough times come in, how do you and I, as as believers, how do we reciprocate? How do we uh, look at those challenges? Look at those tough times? How do we deal with them, right? Uh, so let's look at scripture and how we can uh, tap into the things of God, especially when we face different challenges, both in the workplace and in ministry right so first one remember that mountains can be conquered right? uh, matthew chapter 17 and verse 20 so jesus said to them because of your unbelief for a shortly i say to you if you have faith as a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you right now here's the thing we must be assured that when we are in life's journey, there will be mountains, right? There will be mountains, there will be challenges, uh, there will be very tough times uh, ahead of us. Right? Now, just because we are a believer doesn't mean, and I'm sure we all know this, doesn't mean that everything's going to be smooth. Uh, no, there's going to be tough times. But here's the promise that we have, God's word, that mountains can be moved. Mountains can be conquered uh, and so when we face those challenges when we face tough times uh, yes emotionally we may you know our spirit our soul may wonder you know it's nice when things are going you know well for a long time and but then suddenly there's a shift or there's a change there's a challenge or there's a mountain that comes up uh, it can derail us but remember mountains can be conquered uh, and here uh, the Lord Jesus is talking about this faith that you and I as believers must have, right? So even during those tough times and difficult times, maintain a positive attitude and be thankful, right? First Thessalonians 5, 18, 16 through 18 says, Be cheerful no matter what, pray at all time, thank God no matter what happens. This is the way 
God wants you to belong to Christ, Jesus, to live. Now, every situation, stay cheerful. Be thankful no matter what is happening. Right? Uh, Proverbs 15, 30, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Now, this the best example would be that of Paul and Silas in, in prison, right? So Paul and Silas is in prison. They've been beaten up. They've been, you know, scourged. Everything went wrong, right? Uh, and they've been put into this jail, their hands chained up, their feet chained up. And they had every reason to complain. But what did they do? They maintained a positive attitude. And they remained thankful, right? Uh, and what happened? As they were thankful, they began to pray and sing hymns to God. Prison doors was open. Now, I, I like that verse in the book of Psalms. Uh, I forget what uh, uh, chapter, what, which psalm this is, but uh, maybe any one of you can help me with that. Uh, we bring a sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. Right? So thankfulness and praise Thing that just happens, uh, you know, especially thankfulness in difficult times is is a sacrifice, right? Uh, so it's very easy to complain and say, God, this is what is, these are the 10 things that are going wrong, but only two things are going right. But we can maintain a positive attitude and say, God, I'm giving this sacrifice of praise to you. Thirdly, don't lose confidence. Right? Uh, look at this verse. Psalms 40, verse 1 to 3. I waited patiently for the Lord's help. Then he listened to me and he heard my cry. He pulled me out of the dangerous pit, out of the deadly quicksand. He set me safely on a rock and made me secure. He taught me to sing a new song, a song of praise to our God. Many who will see this will take warning and will put their trust in the Lord. Right. So sometimes we may find ourselves in an unexpected place, right? Uh, we may feel that, you know, we, we're on this certain journey, but somewhere in the middle of the journey, we've probably, you know, because of our own way, we have gone, uh, gone astray or I will not say gone astray, but taken a deviation. Or uh, it could be that the Lord has made us take a deviation. You see that the Lord hand is on it. Right? Right? And sometimes it's very easy to lose confidence. right? Uh, uh, but remember, continue to look to the Lord. Wait on Him. He will come through for you. right? Don't give place for any negatives, for fear, anxiety, or depression. Right? Don't lose your confidence. Right? I love that verse again. You know, there's, there's plenty of scriptures in the Bible which can really build confidence in us. You know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. There's so many verses uh, that we can gain confidence from the Lord. And one of the things that really uh, empowered and helped me during, and even now, you know, at times, you know, as as leaders, as pastors, we're ministering to people. But we ourselves sometimes lose confidence. We feel weak. We feel tired. We feel weary. It's natural, right? Uh, but one of the things that really encouraged me was to go back to the scriptures, right? And these the words of God, the, the, the power of God's word, the living word of God begins to minister to us. Yes, thank you, uh, Divya, yeah, for that verse. So that's Psalms 54 and 6, a sacrifice uh, offering to you. Uh, so don't lose confidence. Even when you see uh, things are not working, you see there's no change, you see there's no progress, it's all right. Don't lose confidence. Continue to trust in God. But again, in the natural, we may need to make a certain change, few changes when you see there's no progress. But trust in God. Have confidence that God is there by your side. Right? Stay anchored in God uh, and, and sing to the Lord. Let, let praise forever be on your lips. Right? Tap into if empowered efficiency. Joshua chapter 23 and verse 10. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your God is he who fights for you, as he promised you. 
right? Now, humanly speaking, right, one man cannot outdo thousand people, right? But for God, the equation is different, right? Uh, now, if you look at thousand people and then one person, obviously, you know, if you think in the natural, the thousand, you don't need thousand, you just need maybe five people to get rid of one person. But with God, the equation is different, right? Uh, uh, you know, if you if you if you look at uh, the Old Testament and the Old Covenant, how uh, the people of Israel, the armies of Israel, won their wars, most of the time they were lesser in number. Right? What did they do? They tapped into empowered efficiency. Right? Uh, uh, there will be times when, you know, uh, for example, uh, a company will have to downsize, right? Okay, we don't need people, and that's what's happening right now, you know, downsizing, uh, and and so definitely it's a challenge, right? Uh, it's stressful, it's gonna be more work, more workload, uh, uh, you know, more targets to reach, uh, lesser people, that's when you, uh, you know, tap into empowered efficiency. Say, God, it is your empowering over me that would enable me to fulfill the task and what took five people to do god can ab enable you and i one person can complete the task of what five people can do that's an anointing that's a empowered stepping tapping into the uh no, you know into the realm of the spirit and saying god empower me and then there's this uh it is not a, like a natural empowering suddenly you feel that you're able to do something you're able to complete your tasks, right? And this is the same with ministry as well, right? Uh, now, especially, uh, you know, at times when, you know, ministry is just going on, it's been two, three years, but everything is just the same. There's no change. Uh, and it's very easy to lose confidence, to lose, you know, to ask God, God, what's happening? Uh, why is this happening? Uh, that's the those are the times in our in our tiredness in our weariness you tap into the uh, empowered efficiency that comes from God you say, say God I thank you for what you're doing in our midst even though we we don't see what you know maybe results but I know that what we are doing is like a seed and it'll bear fruit in the coming years uh, and and so you continue to do what God has called you to do. Right? There's this empowerment from God. All of a sudden, you feel re-energized, re-refreshed, uh, you know, uh, uh, rekindled, refined. You feel so, so refreshed, you know, uh, and that's a wonderful feeling. Right? Uh, I, I, I'm sure you know if you have a, a, a maybe six months of hard work, right, and you take a break and you you go for a holiday, probably alone or with your family. You come back and you're so refreshed. You just want to go. You, you're willing to start work and do your work again. That's what it does, right? The 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 empowering, the tapping into the the things of God will empower us more than what we can do, right? Uh, and there's again in in the Bible, there's so many examples in the old covenant, in the new covenant as well. There's people who tapped into the power of God and they were able to do things, right? We, we studied about Nehemiah. Uh, it's not natural for Nehemiah to get a team together to build the walls of Je the walls of Jerusalem uh, in 52 days. It's not a natural thing. It is empowered efficiency, right? And look at David. It's not a natural thing to you know, you know kill the lion and the bear with his own hands. It's not natural, right? This is all tapped into empowered efficiency. Look at Apostle Paul with all the challenges that he had. Uh, he went on from places to places, uh, planting churches, writing these epistles, tapping into empowered efficiency. So, and that is, uh, you know, the wonderful thing is you and I can continually go there. It's not like God has an expiration date saying three times in a year, that's it. Right? Uh, and after that, you cannot uh, tap into empowered efficiency that's that's that, that's not what you know, that's not how god works god is saying hey any time any day any moment any month at any time you can just tap into the empowered efficiency that's available through the holy spirit right next one god is your boss 
don't worry about bad bosses and unfair employees. Right now, yes, God is our boss, so we always remember that we work for the Lord. But also remember that the Lord has placed leaders under us. Right, so when we do work sincerely, when we do work with all our heart, we're doing right things, and and maybe at times, you know, your your boss uh, may treat you unfairly, or he may uh, reject you for whatever reasons that they may have. Stay focused, right? They say, in the natural, I didn't receive my reward, but I know that you will reward me because I was sincere in what I did, right? So. Uh, it's nice to be rewarded in the natural as well, right? It's a good feeling, and God wants to do that, right? Uh, but there will be times there will be bad bosses, unfair bosses, uh, you know, devious tricks and things that have, people have used in the corporate sector. Uh, all of that will be there. But if you have worked sincerely, if you have worked with all your heart, and you know that you, uh, you know, probably deserve this uh, raise or you deserve this promotion, uh, but it's not come your way. Uh, uh, stay away from complaining. Stay away from fretting about your boss. Right? Focus on what the Lord can do, and remember that the reward comes from God. Right? Even though, uh, look at uh, the story of Jacob. It's so interesting, right? His boss cheated him. Right? Uh, he said, "You work this many years, then I'll uh, I'll give you one of my daughters. One of my daughters." And then he cheated him. And then he said, you work another seven years, and only then I will give you. Right Now, Jacob didn't say, OK, no, I will, you, know, you cheated. Now I'm going to go away. No, he focused on the Lord. He said, OK, God, even though this person did wrong to me, I will continue. Uh, and God blessed Jacob more than he could imagine. Right. Uh, if you see the end of the uh, story, I think we talked about it a little bit. Jacob and Esau, uh, Jacob was blessed beyond measure. Right? Uh, he had so much at the end. Initially, what was he? He was working for somebody, looking after their sheep, cattle. Now, years later, God has blessed Jacob so much that he himself has hundreds of servants and herds and cattle and livestock and and he's ready to go meet Esau. God bless Jacob. So uh, there will be times when God tests us. He allows certain things to happen. And he allows us to, uh, you know, uh, through these people, uh, you know, bosses or unfair employees. It happens, right? But our attitude during that time really matters. Look at God and say, God, my reward will come from you. Continue to be faithful. Right now, I'm not saying we are not saying okay, oh, it's going to happen every time. No, God is faithful. Right, if if you have worked hard, you have uh, you know sincerely worked, you've done your best. You can pray and say, God, this promotion should be mine because I've done my best. I uh, and Lord, I, I I pray that you know you will give me the right to give me the promotion. We pray that way, right? So we don't wait and uh, say no. If the promotion, no, uh, if it doesn't come, I will do this. Is no. Pray. You declare what you want, right? Uh, so we keep doing that. Next one, bouncing back when you are put down. Proverbs 29, 26. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. Right? Oh, I love this verse. Justice for man comes from the Lord. Right? So... Uh, when you think of the word justice, right? Uh, yeah, uh, the first thing that comes to your, probably to my mind is uh, a judge who's sitting uh, in a place of authority. Um, in the place of these, especially in the workplace, in the corporate sector, when you have unfair bosses, when you have uh, bad bosses, and these are managers who hurt you, uh, hurt people, they manipulate, they displace, they uh, put, you know, especially when we do something right and they put that on someone else and, you know, just uh, point wrong things at us. That's very hurtful. It's very hurtful. And we've, I've been through those situations in the corporate sector, right? Uh, uh, 
and it's very painful right it's not something that we can ignore it's a pain that is there right imagine you work hard but somebody else gets the uh, you know benefit of the doubt they get all the uh, you know the uh, standing ovations and all the praise and when we are like hey we are the ones who did everything but they are getting the pay because they have been there for so many years whatever the reason could be um, when you have such kind of bosses and when such kind of situations happen remember justice comes from the lord right uh, just as how reward comes from the lord justice also comes from the lord don't fight back don't retaliate don't go around speaking ill about your boss or about your manager keep your eyes on the lord look to him and he will help right with god's help you can come back strong with faith diligence and great results now the first thing when something wrong happens to us is what to talk back to retaliate no, he said this he did this you know this boss is like this he's always like this he and, and, and then we start talking about it to people and he say you know he always did it like this he never listened to me whenever i would do well he would suppress me or whenever i'd ask for sick leave he would say no no sick leave whenever i would ask for a, a vacation leave he would say no we have more targets and he always did this to me and he's like this you know i wonder how he is and then it starts getting personal. I wonder if he is like this. And I'm sharing this because there are people who have talked to me in the corporate sector, right? Uh, when I was working in the corporate sector, they've talked to me like this. Right? They've asked, they've told me, I wonder if he's like this with his wife and children. I hope his, uh, you know, I hope his wife doesn't, uh, some really bad, uh, terrible things people have spoken of. I hope is uh, I hope they don't have children. I hope that uh, you know their house just uh, doesn't work anymore, doesn't function anymore. I hope their house gets burnt down and all these terrible, terrible things. Uh, and that's not from the Lord at all, right? Uh, especially when people are talking that way, just step away, right? We may be in that same position of hurt. Just step away. Say, just say, hey, no, I, I, I don't want to involve in this. I don't want to talk about this. Uh, and in your heart, you just say, God, justice comes from you. I will continue to look to you. Right? Uh, never talk back. Right? Never retaliate. Never speak ill uh, of your managers, of your, of your bosses. Uh, sometimes we may suddenly say something. As believers, go back, ask for forgiveness, and make things right, and continue what God wants you to do. Right? Uh, don't stoop down to the level of gossip and organizational politics. Oh, Romans chapter 12, 17, 18, and 21. If someone has done you wrong, do not repay them with wrong. Try to do what everyone considers to be good. Do everything possible on your part to live in peace with everybody. Do not let evil defeat you. Instead, conquer evil with good. Uh, such a powerful uh, verse, right? Uh, don't stoop down to the level of gossip and organizational you know, or gossip and uh, politics. Stoop down. I will always remember this example, right? So I and I keep telling it to myself every every time. Oh, maybe you know I feel that something is not right or any time, right? Uh, I always tell myself there's a difference. First thing I ask myself, Paul, are you an eagle or are you a crow? I said, Hey, I'm not a crow. I'm an eagle. Okay. So what do eagles do? Eagles fly high above. Right? They fly high above, above the clouds. Right? They're there high. You don't see crows mingling with eagles, and you don't see eagles mingling. They're not friends. Right? Crows are down. Right? They're there. Right? You find them on the trees. You'll find them, you know, just eating things from the ground. 
It's not so for eagles. Eagles are way up high. Now, a crow and an eagle are not friends. There's a different standard altogether. Right? You are an eagle. Behave like an eagle. Don't behave like a crow. Right? Uh, if you behave like a crow, people will treat you. Treat us like a crow. Oh, he's a crow. You can, you know, if we allow people to gossip and talk politics, if we allow it, they say, okay, hey, this person is, uh, it's okay, I can share with him. He's, uh, you know, he's a crow. He's like me. So two crows are talking about all the office politics happening there. Many times, you know, people have said, hey, uh, you, know, you know what this manager did? You know what this boss did? Immediately, I say, I don't want to know. And I say, why? You know, actually, they all got an appraisal. How come we didn't get a. So I don't want to know. Uh, why? Because I can tell myself, hey, I'm an eagle. If I allow this to happen, not only he, his friends, everyone else will start coming and they'll start opening. They'll think I'm. Politics, and I don't want to be involved in that. Right. So, always tell yourself you're an eagle, not a crow. You're in a workplace, you're an eagle. Right? Uh, and this is really helpful. Right? Uh, now, see, the enemy is very subtle. He can bring in these ways. He wants to involve us in, in politics. And, you know, he wants to involve us in gossip, strife, uh, you know, just maligning people. He wants to involve us in that. He wants us to become a crow. But the Bible says he will rise us up with wings like eagles. He's calling us to be eagles, not crows. Right? Uh, and so in the organization, in the work environment where things are hostile, there's workplace gossip, there's organizational politics, and things will become difficult. Stay clear of it. Right? You don't have to be the famous one. You refuse to participate in such things. Even if others are gossiping about something wrong that's happened in the office, stay away from it because conquer evil by doing what is good. Amen? Conquer evil by doing what is good. Now, when we do this, people may laugh at us, people may mock us and say, hey, this guy is like this only, this girl is like this. But remember, when God is seeing you, He's not. He's seeing you as an eagle. And you look at yourself as an eagle because you are not involved in what crows are doing. You're flying higher than them. And they may think you are low, but actually you are higher. Right? So, always ask yourself, are you an eagle or are you a crow? And that will help us to overcome all of these things. Right? God is your defense against false allegations. Again, Isaiah 54, verse 17. But no weapon will be able to hurt you. You will have an answer for all who accuse you. I will defend my servants and give them victory. The Lord has spoken. Right. Another challenge that could arise in the workplace is false allegations. Right. Uh, uh, and such things can be emotionally disturbing and trying. Never look to God. Right? These false allegations. Right? Uh, but pray for God's favor. Oh, what Daniel? What happened to uh, Daniel? They tried to put false allegations on him. I wanted to get rid of him. What did they do? Okay. Let's make an edict. Those who don't bow down before this golden statue will be thrown into the lion's den or sorry those who don't uh, those who pray to anyone else other than uh, the god of the babel or of of the rise will be thrown into the lion's what happened false allegations right pray that god will defend you against your allegations god is your defense right and many times many many times right uh, uh, people have falsely accused and falsely said things about me. Uh, uh, and now it's very hurting. It's very painful. 
and you feel like defending yourself, you're saying, hey, what is this? I never said that, or I never said this. Uh, in certain situations, you must bring out the truth. But otherwise, let God uh, defend you. God is your defense. Right? And uh, when you let God be our defense, you know, nobody can stand against that. Right? Uh, pray for them that God would be merciful to them, that God would change their hearts and uh, their minds will recant. And uh, you know, when we pray for them, God will be merciful. God will you know, make it in a way that they will change their hearts. Right? Uh, I remember this one time uh, in the corporate sector, uh, there was this, uh, you know, this position of, uh, so we joined an entry level, and then there was, uh, the next position was always a quality, uh, and, and then you become a quality analyst, then you become a senior quality analyst, then you, or you become a team leader, manager, senior manager, so the positions go that way. Right, so when I, uh, I joined the corporate sector in six months, uh, by God's grace, they were in the quality analyst. Now these people in the team of quality, there were maybe about 50, 60 people, and they've been there for years, right? Uh, they've been there for years, like four or five years. And the whole thing came up where for the next uh, you know, uh, IJP, which is internal job posting, uh, the next one was senior quality analyst. So about five of us had applied. And five of us who applied, uh, all of all of us, we were good friends, right? uh, but some of them had something against me, uh, and understandable, right? Because I was just six months in the company. These are people who are five, six years in the company, and now uh, I've worked almost a year, six months in on taking calls, six months in quality. Uh, I'm applying for a senior quality analyst. Well, I was too young to have it. One was not tenured enough to have it. Uh, so they, in their mind, this he should not even know. But I met all the criteria to apply, so I applied. Uh, but I didn't know that they didn't like me, right? Because we were just, you know, yeah, you say hi, you be friends with everyone, right? But I didn't know they had, uh, they didn't like me applying for this position. So they tried all kinds of things. They went into some of my documents. They tried to make some changes. They said, "Oh, this person has so many things wrong." You know, they tried to. They found so many things, and eventually, out of the five, three of them got in, and I didn't get in. Right? I didn't become a senior, uh, so I was okay with it. Right? It's okay. Maybe I'll try the next time. I was too young also, so I said, "Okay, I have time. No problem." Uh, but. I just let it go, but I was, I was, I just wanted to know why I didn't get it. Right? Uh, so I went to the manager. I said, uh, uh, "Can I know why I didn't get it, so that I can improve and do better, so that uh, for the next IJP, which is whenever, usually it's every uh, one and a half to two years, uh, for the next IJP, if I'm around, I can apply I, and I can do better." Uh, uh, then he said, uh, "You tell me why you didn't get it." I said, "I don't know." Uh, and then he put down a list of things that I didn't do. Right? And then I said, no, these are things that I've uh, I've already spoken to the managers. And I've I've done some of it, and since I'm new, I've asked help from uh, my team members, and they have helped me also. Uh, no, but they put it on their name. Your your uh, uh, you know your work. They put it on their name, right? And uh, the whole thing came to light. Right? Uh, I said it's okay, uh, but what happened was God was my defense. Uh, and I, I didn't retaliate. I was just okay. I was just all right with them. I said it's all right. I mean, you know, I was not looking for a career or anything. I know I'm going to quit in a couple of years because I had to do my studies. Uh, but then the manager came and said, oh, "These are the things that happened. Uh, false accusations was put on hold. So what we'll do is we will we will get him also involved as a senior analyst and." So there will be this person also, uh, you know, the, the other three people who got in were, you know, uh, given warnings and all of it. You should not have done it this way and all of that. Uh, but through that whole thing, that whole situation, that whole season, uh, I remember that 
God is my defense. Right? Uh, but there was something that I did also in the natural. So, yes, God is our defense. In the natural, there are things that we have to do. Right? We have to go and ask and ask for feedback, ask for reasons. It's not wrong to ask. You can't say God is my defense and sit and do nothing about it. You've got to move on from there. So, no matter what position you and I are in, in life, uh, whether we are reporting to a senior leader, whether we are not reporting, uh, whether we are even you know the CEO or the owner of a company or a pioneer of a ministry, whatever it is, God is your defense. Uh, just because we are CEOs or leaders uh, doesn't mean people won't point fingers. People will point fingers. But we must understand that God is our defense. <laughs> right? Next one, resolving business conflicts among brethren. Uh, uh, this is a hard thing to do, right? Uh, especially in a world that we live in, uh, if there are people who are in the Lord, uh, Paul writes and he says, even before you do all of this, you you, you take them. Uh, in First Corinthians, he says, right? I'm just going to summarize what he says. He says, uh, would it not be better if you can just settle this dispute among yourselves rather than taking each other to court and then everyone sees it? And everyone ridicules and everyone mocks us and the name of uh jesus be uh, you know as christians we would be uh, mocked and ridiculed so basically he's trying to say there will be disputes but let's try and resolve those disputes in a peaceful manner within a christian circle now if it does not happen even if you have to take to court be honorable don't uh, make it in a way that is, you know, don't make it like an ugly fight or an ugly war between two believers because that's really going to tarnish the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. People are going to say, hey, these people are only talking about love, but they're not walking in love, right? Didn't your, uh, didn't your leader say if somebody slaps you, show them the other cheek? Now, what is happening right now? Uh, people will really ridicule it more. So Paul is trying to say, as brethren, as believers in Christ, try your best to resolve these conflicts, uh, either within the church, within the uh, confines of a ministry, or uh, so that it does not go out and become a big deal. Right? Uh, but there will be times when uh, you, know, you have to, you, know, you may be a good believer, but the other person is just uh, not, or, you know, not abiding by the rules and not abiding by and just sit, wants it his or her way, you may have to go to court, but again, be honorable in doing that uh, uh, so that the name of the Lord shall should not be uh, you know, brought down through all of this. Right? Next one. Don't let male chauvinism or prejudice shake you. Just be who you are. Uh, male chauvinism. Right? Uh, now, uh, let's read this verse, Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, not, there is neither male or female, for you all are one in Christ. Now, this note is for, uh, uh, is of course, for women, right? Now, in situations in the workplace, and I thank God, no, nowadays things are changing, and that's wonderful, right? So people are more open to... Uh, you know, uh, women leaders, uh, both in the corporate and in the ministry. In the corporate, when you see now, there are plenty of women leaders, pioneers. Uh, so that's wonderful, right? Uh, and then in the ministry also, we see many pioneers of the ministry, women leaders, women pastors, women uh, who are leading up ministries. So that's good. Uh, and, but... There will be times, there will be places, there will be situations when, you know, there will be this whole feeling of male chauvinism, meaning saying that, okay, uh, you know, as, as a male, I should do it, I should be the leader, or as a male, I should get this, uh, you know, this position, or I should be better than all the people in the team. Stand your ground as women. Stand your ground. Continue to demonstrate the value of your organization uh, wherever possible. Whenever you see these kinds of male chauvinism or prejudice that's taking place because of gender, 
you know, go to the appropriate leader and straighten things out, right? You can either email them, go and talk to them. Uh, then there is, you know, sometimes male, uh, you know, colleagues, bosses, superiors, that they make sexual advances, uh, looking for opportunities among women. Uh, uh, sometimes they say, hey, uh, you know, uh, they give hints for sexual favors, for promotions in the company. Just, you know, you know as women, just step away, right? Let's say, I did not agree to this. Just say no. Build a wall around yourself. Protect yourself, right? Don't give in to the pressure, right? Um, uh, you know, it's been a long time now. It's been more than 15, 12 years that I've left the corporate. But I, I really don't know what's happening around in the corporate. But I'm sure, you know, the enemy is the same. Right? He still comes to deceive, to entice people. Uh, so as women, uh, take necessary precautions. Uh, right? Uh, be wise. Uh, draw. Uh, don't draw unnecessary attention. Uh, in the workplace, right? uh, meaning be wise the way we behave, and, uh, but stand your ground. Uh, God has called you to be a leader. God has called you to uh, you know, pioneer of ministry or pioneer of business or be a, a leader in an organization. Stand your ground right? uh, and protect yourself. Uh, God is fighting for you. right? Stay away from the woman seducer. Don't play with fire. Proverbs 5, 3, and 6. But the lips of an immoral woman drip honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lay hold of hell. Lest you ponder her path of life, her ways are unstable. Right? You do know them. Right? Now, on the flip side, there could be women who will try to entice men right there will be women who will tr who may try to uh, you know bring in temptations and bring in things uh, for men again just step away right as men uh, we must draw the line draw the boundary know where what we are doing right if you're ridiculed for your faith stay strong right uh, don't be discouraged that you know, hey, everyone are making fun of me, right? Especially Christians in the workplace now. Uh, sometimes there can be a verbal argument. Uh, you know, things may get out of control. People, uh, I, I remember there's this one time somebody came up to me and said, "Because of you Christians, uh, our nation is not becoming a, a Hindu nation." Right? And he was upset with me. Uh, and every time he would see me, he would be upset with me, right? and. Uh, uh, you know, there are people like that, right? Uh, I remember very clearly because uh, every morning he would go to worship at his temple, and he would come with those, you know, those marks, and uh, and you know he would be barefoot, uh, very devout Hindu, uh, very good person, right? Nothing wrong about him. Very hardworking, very honest. Uh, but he didn't like me. Uh, but I realized over time it was not that he didn't like me. He didn't like of Right. So there will be times when you are ridiculed for your faith. Stay strong. Know that uh, you are blessed. You know, and I, I would say this out of experience that initially, when you're ridiculed for your faith, you feel bad. You feel, oh God, you know, they're mocking me. They're ridiculing me. But I think over time, you know, uh, uh, you and I can just we just get over it. But right? uh, there was a time initially I would feel very bad. I go back and do three days fasting, prayer, and all those things. After that, after that, when when that whole season was over, maybe six months or maybe a year, after that, it didn't really matter for me, right? It really didn't matter for me. So people say many things, ridicule for for the faith. Remember, just stay strong. Know that you are blessed of the Lord. Uh, continue to walk with uh, wisdom. Don't be ashamed of what God is doing in your life. Don't be ashamed of uh, carrying the name of Jesus. Uh, continue to work hard. Let your light shine. Be exceptional in what you do, and God will honor you. God will give you opportunities in the workplace as well uh, to really be that light. And people will notice. Right? Always remember, 
people notice, they watch, right? Uh, whether corporate, whether the ministry, they watch, they learn, right? And uh, initially, they may not uh, say it, but remember, they are watching, they are learning, right? And I have plenty of examples, but we don't have time. But uh, even if you're ridiculed, People may say, hey, these Christians don't believe in LGBT. They don't believe in this. How can Jesus be there? How can, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. This Christianity is nonsense. They may say all of all these things, and these Christians are fools. They may ridicule, but you know what you are. So you just stand strong in your faith. <laughs> uh, next one, uh, wisdom answers to nepotism. Uh, Jeffina, uh, can I just finish these two points, and then I'll come to you? A question hope that's okay no first it was just mistaken sorry oh okay okay all right okay next one wisdom answers to nepotism uh proverbs 17 2 a wise servant will rule over a son who causes shame and will share an inheritance among the brothers right now when when times come when you know, we've heard this word nepotism, right? And uh, especially in the workplace, there's plenty of that, right? Uh, brothers, own relatives, own uh, family members. Uh, uh, and then we, they get these positions just because they are family. They may not know anything about the organization because of what they're, they're you know, it's like a birthright, right? They, they're just born into this rich family or they're born into these families where everyone are, you know, big leaders, big bosses. And sometimes, uh, you know, their family members are just given positions uh, on their lap. Uh, even if they're not able to or not capable enough to handle those roles, during those times, respond with wisdom, right? Uh, your wisdom will give you, uh, will be noticed and it will give you access to what others don't have, right? Now these these people who've joined these companies and they get these positions, but they're not capable enough. With you, you and I walking in wisdom, demonstrating wisdom, can overpower these this thing of nepotism. It'll be seen. Our works will be seen. Right. So wisdom answers nepotism. Now I'm not saying that it will never happen. Uh, nepotism it does definitely happen uh, it's out of our control but some things that we can do is walk in wisdom walk in love uh, continue to work hard ask god for wisdom god, ask god for uh, ways that you can you know uh, maybe uh, enlarge your thinking new uh, ideas new strategies new innovations these are things that god can give us and we talked about it right so that answers nepotism Imagine a person, you've got the position, not doing anything, but somebody else is here, uh, doesn't have the position, but you know, just doing so well, it'll be noticed by the bosses, it'll be noticed by leaders, and God will open the right doors. Right? Finally, the last one, the pink slip and honorable exits. Romans 8.28, you know that all things work, all things God works for good with those who love him, those who whom he has called according to his purpose. Now, the time at an organization, sometimes it is because the employer asks you to leave, or sometimes uh, you know, we choose to move on to a different organization or a different company. Always leave in a, in a friendly term, in an honorable way. Right? Uh, plan and prepare for your next step before you make a move. So for example, if if a company says, uh, can I just take a few minutes? I know the time is up, but uh, just explain this and we'll stop. Right? Uh, uh, picture this. Imagine a company says, uh, you have another three months. We'll have to let go of you because we are downsizing. Now, it's not the manager's fault. The company is downsizing. So, or well, you have three months, you plan. Right? Now, don't be bitter with a company. Hey, you know, I've worked here for so many years and now they're letting me go. Yes, it's painful. Right? It is uh, sad, but you can look at all that you have learned through it and look at a new phase and say, God, help me to plan ahead. So three months I have here, help me to plan, help me to you know, open the right doors for me uh, and remove every bitterness or anger that may be there against 
uh, people in this company and the company as a whole. So you're leaving in an honorable way. But secondly, if you are making a move, you have decided to move in, uh, plan your exit out, plan it in the right way, right? And uh, uh, have an honorable exit. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I remember when I was leaving the corporate company, everyone was, uh, uh, you know, my team especially, they were saying, you know, hey, you don't have to leave, you can work at least part time. Uh, but uh, when I left, I, I just said to everyone, you know, I was, it's always a joy to, I enjoyed my time here. Uh, you know, I thank, uh, and I use the name of God in my, uh, and I said, you know, thank God for giving me this opportunity, good friends, and I learned so much here. Uh, I will always keep it with me. Uh, and everyone, uh, you know, everyone, I, I thought nobody would come for my, uh, you know, the farewell that they would say, you know, right? because as a Christian boy, and everyone were mocking me and ridiculing me. So I thought maybe two, three of them, or maybe five or 10 of them would come uh, for my farewell. Uh, but to my surprise, there were about 170 people who had come to my farewell and these are people from other teams as well and the, my manager came up to me and said 170 people have come for your farewell where even when managers leave there are only about uh, 40 50 people who come what did you do i said i didn't do anything and i didn't do anything now, all i did was i worked i was i just you know probably shared some things with them uh, uh, and of course the prayer that we had started and all of it uh, but I, I'm so glad, you know, even thinking about it, I'm so glad, you know. Uh, and my manager said, you have done something in this company where 170 people have come for your farewell. Uh, I said, no, it's not me. It's, it's God. And so when we do that, uh, when we exit out honorably, it's such a joy that, uh, uh, that, you know, God has done something in your life and you're going into the next phase, right? So uh, we've come to the close of this chapter. Uh, we we'll pick up from next Monday on Monday. We'll do stewardship again, another very important uh, chapter. Uh, we'll try to finish as soon as possible. Right. All right, let's close in prayer. Any questions? Any thoughts? Uh, we crossed our time. Any questions? Thoughts you'd like to share? Okay, so let's just close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to study and learn. Uh, and Lord, we just thank you for your grace, your anointing upon each of our lives. Oh God, we pray that in everything that we do, that we will honor your name, give glory to your name, that your name will be exalted in our lives. We thank you, God. We pray for each and every student. Continue to empower each one of them, Lord. Use them for your glory. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful week ahead. I'll see you on Monday. God bless.